Welcome in generals to the Five Star News. I'm Alex Potasan and this is Kayla Cumbie and we have lots to bring to you today. Yes, we will talk about the big win the guys had over Gilmer Tuesday and we will recap the snowman slam because we all know who was going to win anyways. All that and more coming up next on the Five Star News. Welcome in, Generals, and let's go ahead and get started with the show. Yes, Alex, and there has been so much going on since we got back from break. That's true, Kaylor, but let's see what we have coming up later this week and next week. Here's Dylan Brown and Grayson Ward with What's Up Heritage. What's up, Heritage? I'm Grayson Ward. I'm going to be delivering to you the current events that are going to happen throughout the next couple of days. So, today, there's a collegiate aid meeting at 6 o'clock. You need to go there if you're struggling with tuition or trying to find a way to pay your tuition. Also, on Saturday, our band team is traveling all the way down to UGA for a jam fest. And our band's really good. So if you want um, to go out there and support them, it's a long drive, but I, I highly recommend it. Also on Saturday, the HHS Five Star Dance Team is having an invitational, and they're going to be hosting it. It's going to last all day. So if you could come out and support our HHS Five Star Dance Team, that would be very appreciated. That's all for me. Now to my boy, DB. Thanks, Grayson. I got y'all with this week's weather forecast. Today, we're going to have a high of 57 and a low of 35 with a 10% chance of rain. Friday, there'll be a high of 53 and a low of 43 with no chance of rain. Saturday, it'll be a rainy one. It'll be a high of 57 with a low of 33 with an 80% chance of rain. Sunday, it'll be mostly sunny with a high of 46 and a low of 24 with no chance of rain. And Monday will be a high of 42 and a low of 23 with no chance of rain. That's all for me. I'll send you all back to the anchors for more news. Thanks for always keeping us up to date, guys. Now on to some of our band students and their great accomplishments. Just recently, we had four lucky members of the band travel and compete and be listed in the All-State Band. And we had some of our reporters go out and talk to these students to see how excited they were. Well, let's just send it over to Mattson Hogue and Tyler Ingram with all the details on the story. This past Saturday, we had some students uh, travel down to Union Grove High School for the second round of Allstate uh, auditions. In Georgia, they have two different rounds. So on the, on the first uh, audition, you had to score a, a certain score, and then you're able to go to the second round. So we actually had... Um, I think about 24 go down to the audition on Saturday, and we had 14 selected to the All-State Band, which is pretty awesome. I play the clarinet. I feel pretty good since it's my fourth year, and it's always fun to go down there with all my friends. Usually, whenever they come out with the etudes in, like, July, I prepare for both, so I play the district one and the All-State one and just prepare all the way through. I play the trumpet. I feel pretty good. Um, it's my first time ever making all states, so that's fun. I'm looking forward to it, going down there. Well, over the last couple months, I've been working on the etudes, working section by section, getting as many runs as I can, and it all paid off. Uh, overall, in the state, um, out of every high school in the state of Georgia, we had the second most students chosen. We were tied with four or five other schools, but they were all in the uh, Cobb County, Gwinnett County area. Um, we're the only school our size that had anywhere close to this many students. Really proud of them. They'll perform with the All-State Band the first weekend in March. You know, Kaylor, I've always wondered something. Well, Alex, what is that? How does the band travel everywhere and bring their instruments, too? Well, they have this huge 18-wheeler that they get to travel with for their instruments while they use buses to take the students. But I just heard their trailer got a brand new wrap on it. Really? Well, let's send it over to Jacob Simpson with more details on their new edition. Hey, if you, if you looked out back behind the gym recently, you've seen a new trailer out back. Uh, we've had a chance to rewrap our band trailer that we use in the fall for the football games. Uh, the, uh, the logo we had on there was um, 12 years old, so we thought it was time for an update. Uh, so recently we got a band wrap, and uh, although 
as a senior, I won't be able to use it or get much use out of it. Um, I'm pretty sure the rest of us will, like, th in the uh, coming years. I think uh, it's kind of, it's kind of, kind of good to see a new fresh image for the band. So yeah, we got a new band rap, and I think it's pretty cool because, like, the um, colors are nice on it, and it's very representat representative of the type of band we try to bring because it looks nice, and our band looks amazing on the field, and. I'm a senior, so I can't like see the effect of the band that the band truck has on the band or the opponent's band, but I think it'll do great and last a long time. We're really excited about it. It, it looks sharp. It's it's more up to date, and uh, we can't wait to take that to the to the ball games for next year. I think it's gonna will arrive in with some style, and so we're really happy about that. Thanks for that story, you guys. But it is time for a commercial break here on the show. Don't go away, because sports is next. Hello everyone, your favorite anchors are back. Yes, and I know it seems like Groundhog Day, but it's not. On to our first story now. Our basketball team played Gilmer Tuesday night. The Generals defended the Taj and pulled out a 66-62 win over the Bobcats. Here is Cade Collins, Caden Snyder, and Carson Palmer with the recap. First half, uh, got off to a good start. They were in man on defense, and um, we've been working really hard in practice on uh, executing some man offense. Uh, did a really good job, got up to a big lead, and in the second half they changed defenses on us, went to a zone, slowed us down a little bit, got us out of rhythm, but in the end we were able to hit some free throws and close them out with a four-point win. So Tuesday night we got a big region win over Gilmer. Um, ended up being close in the end. Uh, we did start out well and got a big lead on them, and they kind of came back a couple times on us. Uh, but the guys were pretty tough. We, um, we held on one at the end, hit a few free throws, and uh, ended up winning by four, I think. Um, that pretty much assures us we'll be ahead of Gilmer in the standing. So for the region tournament, that helped us out. We're really fast start against Gilmer, and like we we were playing really good the first half, feeling really good about ourselves. And then second half came, and we had a not a great third quarter, but I mean it was there. And then fourth quarter, we stepped stepped it back up again, and then we won by how many? Four, I think. Yeah, I think we won by four. So and it was a good win overall. Good region win. Uh, maturity. We've got to be able to handle the ball uh, within uh, all their pressure coming at us. Um, got to be mature, got to be strong, got to be disciplined, and uh, hopefully over the next two days we can get ready for them and uh, execute a game plan on Friday. So tonight we are heading down to Northwest. Um, we played them pretty tough here except for the third quarter. They blew us out in the third quarter. Uh, one of their guys, Callen, he uh, had a good night shooting the ball, and then we had trouble with their pressure. So we worked on that. We're gonna had a good week of practice uh, yesterday and uh, Wednesday. So looking forward to going down there and maybe getting an upset. Our girls' team also played Tuesday. Unfortunately, the game went a little different than the boys' game. Yes, our girls lost to the Lady Bobcats. Here is Eli Owens and Zach Brown with the recap. Yesterday we played Gilmer at home and um, the first half we didn't come out too strong and then the second half we ended up coming out better but we played Gilmer Tuesday and we didn't play very well. We had really bad defense and we just couldn't score and so we just didn't play our best but we should practice hard and come together and hopefully we'll be able to beat Northwest tomorrow. Um, we play Northwest Friday there and hopefully we can come out and get a win for the season. All right, so Tuesday we had a tough loss against Gilmer County. 
Um, obviously, our record is not great, but our goal is to uh, look, move forward and get ready for Northwest on Friday, tomorrow. Um, we usually play Northwest pretty good down there. I don't know what it is, but every time we go to Northwest, we usually play um, up a level. So our goal is to get ready um, today at practice and have a great practice, go down there, and hopefully come out with a W. Hey, Jackson, did you enjoy the snowman slam? Yes, I did. I especially enjoyed watching your teachers beat the juniors again. Didn't we all? Here's Brooklyn Collins and Destiny Rose with the recap. Hey, it was a snowman slam. Uh, the seniors, we came out, we did pretty well. I was just a pickup player, but they really needed me because I actually know how to play. I was mainly the server, and I was front line, and we did really good. We smacked the sophomores, but then we got cheated against the juniors. Uh, but the juniors lost to the teachers. They got smacked. So, yeah, I guess I'm retiring because I'm a senior, but good luck to the people next year. I think we should have come out on top, you know. We definitely didn't play our hardest. I didn't get to play that much. Disappointing, because, I mean, I'm like LeBron James on the volleyball court. Um, but, yeah, uh, I didn't get to show off my spike skills. But still, we got all the way to the teacher's game, and we should have won. Teachers have won every year, but we almost came out with a dub, and we're going to get them next year. Snowman Slam was yesterday. It was a great event, uh, especially for the students and the staff. Uh, you know, the students did put up a good fight in the end, uh, but in the end, uh, staff always prevails. We're always better. Uh, you know, that's probably the closest game they've ever played, and that might be the closest game they ever play. And so we look forward to next year. Um, you know, maybe if you play your cards right, you can put up a better fight. But again, like I said, the staff prevails. Everybody had a lot of fun at the Snowman Slam, and uh, always good to get out there and you know, play a little volleyball and uh, get to compete with the, the students. And, uh, you know, I thought it was a good time. Obviously, there, there was no doubt that uh, Coach Lawless was player of the day and uh, kind of uh, was definitely the, the reason that the teachers were, were able to come out victorious. And uh, so I thought it went good. Hopefully, uh, there was some good money made for volleyball and a uh, fun time out there. Thank you for sports, you guys. Yes, and hopefully we can get another dub against LFO and Northwest this weekend. Now let's get into a new segment. This one is actually from Coach Green's second block entertainment class. Let's see what they got in store for us. Here is Jeffrey Monin. Hello, people. Welcome to the first episode of Heritage Unsolved. Today we'll be talking about... Resurrection Mary. Thank you. <laughs> Are you ready for this? <laughs> yeah. I don't think you are. You don't seem like it, but let's get into it. Oh. Boy. Okay. Uh, so Resurrection Mary is a well-known Chicago area ghost story of the vanishing hitchhiker type, as I just said. The theory is that in the 1930s, a woman was at like this party, and then she got mad at her boyfriend or something, and then she left, and then on her way home, she got hit by a car, and it was a hit and run, and she died, and they buried her in Resurrection Cemetery, and... Supposedly, her ghost walks like around the cemetery at night, and sometimes she gets picked up by you know these random people, and then she's like, "Take me somewhere," and then when they're getting there, she's like, "Stop the car." <laughs> Stop the car. Why? I dropped my pocket on the road. What were you talking about? <laughs> Stop the car. <laughs> And then they'd be like, huh? And they'd turn around and she'd be gone. Huh? <laughs> Beautiful. So, I don't know if she's still seen, but recent sightings on this, at least, said that the last time she was... <coughs> Sorry, my lung collapsed. Continue. The last, sight the last known sighting was in 1989. So, what is your opinion on this? <laughs> um, I mean, I kind of, I kind of believe it. It's very, because ghosts have been a part of my life for a long time, uh, and, you know, I kind of, I kind of do believe it, a little bit, there isn't that much, <laughs> there isn't that much evidence to, to fully say that this is real, and it remains. Oh, we're doing the outro. <laughs> okay. 
had fun, did you? Yeah. You hesitated. All right, so. I always hesitate. In conclusion. She's not solved. Unsolved? Yes. Well, until next time. Robert, clean that up. Now for what I personally think is the coolest part of the show. Oh gosh, Alex, is this going to be all semester? Well, we'll just have to see, Kaylor. But here's Luke Bussey and Cameron Smith with Cool or Not Cool. Cool. Not cool. Where are you? Oh, <laughs> hey, didn't see you there. Cameron Smith here. The app I chose for Cool Not Cool today is the Akinator. Okay, this app can guess the person, a place, a thing, or an animal. And, you know, it asks you questions, yes or no, and you just select what it is, and it'll come to the, your answer. Hello, everyone. My name is Luke Bussey, the previous winner of Cool Not Cool. And the app I have selected today for today's app edition is Flight Radar 24. It is an app that shows you where all the planes are that are flying currently where they are in the world. Check it. They're the closest plane to us is an American Airlines plane that just landed in Chattanooga. Luke, obviously mine's better than yours. No, mine's better than yours. Mine's cooler. Mine's cooler. Hey! What's up, Grayson? Hey, Grayson. I'll settle this, guys. Where are you guys choosing between? Akinator. Flight Radar 24. Check it. Man, well, this is a tough one. But I'm definitely going to have to go with the cool app, because this is definitely not cool. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Thanks, Psycho. You pointed Thanks. at my phone, though. Well, I was pointing at how lame it is. <laughs> well, I've been watching both of them real close, and I, I like amps, but I like the flat rate 24, because you can see all the airplanes leaving. And, I mean, I think that's pretty awesome, you know. I get cards and letters from people I don't even know. Okay, well, having previewed the apps, this one really is just process of elimination, so I have to go with Luke. Luke is cooler because you can see all the planes. <laughs> so, you know, I'm 0-2 at the moment. Luke's 2-0. I'm 2-0, oh. undefeated. You know, congrats, Luke, congrats. Okay. I mean, I think it was rigged, you know. The last question, the tiebreaker, was decided by my ex-girlfriend. Not hey, good, uh, not good. You not want good. some pepper with that salt? Thanks, guys, for always keeping us laughing. But sadly, that is all the time we have for today's show. But we will be back Tuesday with a brand new show. So until then, stay, stay classy, classy heritage. heritage.